Yes, this is where we get into all the UFO news. And John has us up to date. We're going to start off with one of the biggest players in the game, Christopher Mellon. Worked for three different presidents, was a high player in the To The Stars Academy, now working with Luis Elizondo in spreading the love around the world about how real UAP are. What's new with Mr. Mellon? He's been pretty silent the last couple of months. John? Well, you know, this. Well, first off, greetings, everyone. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, Christopher Mellon is playing this wonderful role now, which I absolutely adore. Uh, you know, I'd love to play the same role someday, where he just, you know, uh, he's this elder statesman, sits on high, and when he sees an opportunity to inject something wise or, or thoughtful or, or knowledgeable, he just swoops down and, you know, blows it up. And it's, it's, it's fun because you don't hear from him very often, but when you do, his words have weight, you know? And, um, and basically it's, it's a good blog post. I mean, I, I'll include it in my notes. Everyone should go and read it, but essentially the nut of what he's saying, which I, I have to say, I totally agree with is that, that even if the, um, which I understand it has, though I, I need to get confirmation, uh, uh, confirmation on this. Um, I assuming that, that the, the, the more verbose language that we saw in the house bill uh, is the one that, that survives the, the merging and, and, and gets signed by the president. He said, you know, even if we get all of that, which, you know, me personally, you know, I look at those five, you know, those five pages and I'm like, hey, this is, you know, especially the stuff about like medical effects. I was pretty excited, you know, and he's saying this isn't good enough. And you guys shouldn't be satisfied by this because what they're really doing is they're they're adding work to an already understaffed and underpowered unit of, of people, whether it's the, the task force or whether it's a unit within the secretary of defense. It's still going to be this subservient unit that essentially is, is going to have a lot of the same limitations and a lot of the same challenges. And so what he's arguing for is that it get elevated to a much higher office and you essentially have a, you know, um, you know, you know, probably, a, you know, a, a multi-star admiral or multi-star general essentially running the show where, you know, they they have equal sitting, you know, between the different groups and actually have some real authority, have their own, you know, he, he suggests, you know, um, you know, possibly bringing it into another organization that already exists so that you already have staff and resources. He's not saying it has to be sprung up from nothing, but he wants it to be a, its own, you know, its own functional organization. And while I, you know, he knows far better than I do how realistic that is. You know, I have no idea what the appetite is within the Department of Defense to have something like that exist. But the sentiment and the, the logic behind what he's saying, I completely agree with. I think he makes a really good point. I'm very curious about this because Chris Mellon has made it very known that he only speaks when he needs to speak. He's not like Lou Elizondo, who has volunteered his time to go on every news station and, and podcast out there. He has been very, very stoic with who he chooses to speak with, namely mainstream media outlets to uh, very high-end radio shows. Never mind, you know, he hasn't been interested in getting into and running the, the podcast gamut of the UFO world. Why, after a couple of months, do you think he's coming out about this? It's for the very reason you just stated, Dave. Essentially, what you have here is you have a tag team. You have uh, it's very much like a you know in, in what I consider a proper company. You you have a you have a president and you and you have a, a CEO and the CEO talks up and out to the board and to the the shareholders and to the customers and the president talks. I hate to use the word down, but down to and runs the actual you know day to day organization. What you have is you have Lou who speaks you know, to the masses. And then you have Mellon that speaks up to essentially Congress and to the White House. And so I think many of, of what many of the of the of the pieces that he's writes are we're just reading it because we get to. It's not addressed to any of us. He's writing that to the you know Senate Arms Committee. He's writing that to the president. He's writing that to the stakeholders. He's writing that to the people who actually hold the purse strings and who can actually make it happen. Well, the fact is, he has done a very good job at making his point known and using the mainstream media as the conduit to getting things done. He realizes that if he speaks now, the media and the mainstream is going to listen. 
They're not going to poo-poo the subject the way they did normally previous to four years ago. So and I, and it doesn't keep him from going out on a limb once in a while. He just does it very infrequently. I mean, the last time he came out and I think he was talking with um uh oh man, I can't remember who he was talking with. I think it was uh, you know, I don't want to say I could be wrong, but you know, there have been a couple of times where he's gone out and talked, and I've been really surprised by some of the stuff he said, right? He's really gonna kind of gone out a little further than I expected him to. But once again, as you just stated, he does it very infrequently. He does it very carefully. He does it very methodically. And and his words have weight. Very true. All right, let's move on to the next subject. We talked a little bit about it with Thomas Fessler earlier on, but this rubber ducky video is really catching on around the UFO world. Luis Elizondo has come out and, and claimed that it is 100% real and that it's a video that we need to pay attention to. What's your thoughts? So um, just, you know, as a fan of Sesame Street, I'm just personally, I'm just really enjoying the rubber ducky theme. You know, I just I'm just really getting a kick out of it. Um, that's my favorite part of the whole story. Um, you know what it comes down to is so there's good and bad in this. Right. Um, in, in one case, we have uh, we have another person who is unfortunately um, really. Uh, drummed up a whole lot of passion and um, excitement about something that for most people is going to actually be a little lackluster. And, and that that's a bad habit. We all need to get in, get out of, right. We, we need to stop doing that to people because it, it makes people gun shy. It gives them PTSD over, over, you know, news in, in this, in this world. So it, that, that was an unfortunate, unfortunate occurrence. It was good that it didn't come this time from Jeremy Corbell. Um, and so it shows that Jeremy's not the only one who's overhyping things, that there might be just a very human tendency to overhype something that you know you are the sole possession of and, and that, you know, you're going to release it and it's hard not to get excited. And so, you know, maybe this means Jeremy does have a little more, a little more leg room. But um, the thing that's really interesting about it is that, you know, like to me, this great contrast was um, uh, uh, Dave Felch did this great um this great little uh, uh, video on on it, and his video is like um, it's like eight eight minutes and I think eleven seconds or something. It's a really short video, and it's it's beautiful. I mean, I I'll link it. it everyone should watch this. It, he he does he shows you what balloons look like under IR. He shows you what mylar balloons look under IR. He shows you how heat dissipation. He shows you so much about like how this whole thing really works. And then he looks at the video and, and, you know, and, and he basically says, and I, I agree with him that, yeah, it's not doing anything really crazy, but, um, it's existence is a little bit crazy, right? I mean, one, you, you have what, what might actually be two objects, right. That don't appear to be tethered and, and appear to be operating in sync. And, and, and he thinks there's a good chance that's what's going on. And if that's the case, that's, that's super interesting. But what he really points out is that, you know, when you look at the color scheme that gets put out by the IR, the fact that, you know, the colors that you get are based on what you set to, right? So you're, you're looking for, you know, if you're looking for humans, you set for human temperature, and then you, you, you basically get hotter and colder on, on either side of that temperature, right? And this is an object that, um, consistently has no heat. I mean, this thing is just completely evacuated of any of any heat at all. And it shows no temperature variation at all. And it shows no temperature variation around the object in any way, shape or form. So there's no indication of how on earth the thing's moving. Now, is it filmed in a location that is um, common for drug running? Yes, of course. Um, you know, it, uh, is it possible that someone's come up with drone technology that can do this? It's not going very fast. It's not very high up. Um, it's even the, the time that because it, it's nice. That it's a long video. Right. Um, but even the time that it's going, we have drones that can go that that long. So none of that stuff. It's certainly none of the five observables. Um, but um, there's enough there to say that you cannot come to any conclusions as to what it is. And um, a lot more analysis needs to be done. And there are some very odd things about it. And the last thing I'll add really quick is, and I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, is that my understanding is, and you might know better than I, is that this is the video that the SCU has been looking at. 
and um, and the video we heard about them looking at a couple weeks ago. And um, if that's the case, one, I'm happy that they're spending so much time looking at it. But two, I'm a little bummed because I was kind of hoping the video they were looking at was something, you know, a little more, you know, shiny and, and glossy. But I was I'm not going to lie. I was really hoping that the video the SCU was looking at was the 21 minute video that Elizondo. Oh, so was I. Oh, so was I. And 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 I haven't seen any confirmation yet out of the SCU to say, yes, this is the video we were looking at. But that's that's the, that's what I've heard from a couple people. And so so I, it's something that needs to be followed through on. But, um, you know, it's it's um, it, it's odd. It is. It's an odd video. I mean, for it to go that long without like, I mean, it's a it's it's like it's good. the thing is, is it is one of the great points that that Felch brings up is it is it to if you had a if you had any sort of an engine in that thing to keep it that consistently cool you would need something in it generating the cold right which itself would create heat so you have this real nasty problem where how would you create enough enough cold to cover the propulsion system and enough cold to cover the system that's producing the cold for propulsion. I mean, this is, it's not the simplest problem to solve. Well, here's the interesting part about this and, and that Thomas and I were talking about this was, video was allegedly uh, leaked out by someone within Homeland security. And we know that these videos just do not get leaked out. Okay, there is a protocol that goes along with these videos. We also know that Elizondo has confirmed that this video is real, that he had seen it before, you know, it, and a lot of people still buy it when, when Lou confirms something. So, and if I could add something really quick, is DHS deals with drug runners all the bloody time. And so they know what drug runners look like under this. And so why would they release a video of drug runners like to me the whole point of releasing something would be something where they're like this is weird like you know what i mean like wh why like that doesn't make sense to me well i mean we only have to take it at their word that's all we can take about you know i mean otherwise is it is it a red herring could be could be a giant floating duck you know what i'm saying it could it and, could be yes and to that point i was kind of hoping and i still am i was kind of hoping that this would end up being nothing that we would that we would all quickly come to some agreement that this was a this was a, a a false positive and there was nothing going on because let's be honest for all the things that happen a percentage of these should be wrong a percent of these should have prosaic explanations and so far most of the things we've seen except for a few things that jeremy's done uh most of the things we've seen a lot of us have come to the conclusion are real. And so that kind of throws off the statistics a little bit. There, there should be a couple ones that, that get proved wrong. And I was kind of hoping this might be one of them, but we'll see. We will definitely see. We got one more topic for you to share with us tonight. And that is regarding the UFO world conference. What's going on? Yeah. So the, the main reason why I wanted to bring this up is because um, it's it's not a local conference. I mean, it is local. It's in Barcelona. Um, and if you ever can go to Barcelona, um, I highly recommend it. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. Um, and but um, but because it came just after that, um, that that previous conference um, that was, I think, two weeks ago, um, this kind of snuck up on a lot of us. It was like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, a lot of us. I mean, I personally was was just heard about it a couple of days ago and I, I i felt bad i, I should have known and um it's got some good speakers i mean ballet is going to be speaking there himself and so um it's it's got it's got a good list of speakers it should be a really good show and it's an online conference so um i have no idea what they're charging but um anyone in the world can sign up and it uh, it starts i believe uh tomorrow um and uh if there isn't some pre-stuff tonight uh, you know usually conferences might have one or two things a night of, of people arriving but the bulk of it will start on on the saturday and uh and so you know if, if you if you have the free funds and you have the free time i suggest you check it out it should be a good show and um and you know it's not very often you get to see valet speak so um definitely worth checking out definitely and and you know what we appreciate you coming on in once again for another outstanding edition of the unbiased ufo report